What's up guys, Rodney here, and today we're gonna talk about one year review with the Google Pixel 6 Pro. So, let's go. All right, so let's talk Google Pixel 6 Pro. Um, I get it, a lot of people out of the box, they got these phones right when they came out. Everybody was really excited, I was excited. I thought they looked great. I thought the design was something that we had not seen from Pixel, they were being really bold, they were really making a shift in a different direction, and I thought that was fantastic. I loved the camera bar running across the entire phone, back of the phone. I just thought it looked great. I love that Pixel was keeping the two-tone look, and the bar, camera bar kind of broke that up. Everything was great. So out of the gate, we know that Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro weren't seamless. They weren't without a lot of issues and some big time YouTubers I think really killed the phone um, experience for a lot of people. I know Google rolled out a lot of updates, they fixed a lot of stuff and the phone aged really well and if you picked up a Pixel 6 Pro late in 2022 like you know March, April, May you probably got a decent device that had all the bugs almost worked out. Um, I heard a lot of people talk about um, things like speakers not being great, screen not being great, modems not being great, all that kind of stuff. So I want to address pretty much all of that. You've probably by now seen a lot of Pixel 6 and 6 Pro reviews, the 7's out. So is this a good buy here late coming into December of 2022? Well that's what we're going to talk about. So let's talk about the design. Overall, the 6 and 6 Pro have a lot to love as well. That um, camera bar being all black kind of hides the cameras that are in them. So you kind of don't know, do you have a 6 or do you have a 7? You can only tell kind of by the size and then sometimes depending on the size of people's hands, you don't really know what they get. But I think overall the design has aged well. I still really like it. I really like the two-tone. I think Google kind of should have kept with that, but I get they're trying to push more in that premium pro line of, of phones that want to be known as a flagship. It is nice. But I think if you're looking at the options of what a 6 or a 6 Pro costs now, what you can get one of those phones for, I think they're a steal. I don't think that if you're looking at design, there's a big need for you to really go, Oh, the other design so much better to upgrade over it. You're going to want to put a case on it. These are some of the slipperiest, glossiest phones you can get. And that was one of my kind of downsides to both phones, but mainly the 6 Pro when I got it. Um, and I'm going to stop right here and go right into performance and tell you why 6 Pro over 6. And maybe even why 6 Pro over 7. So I'm a big believer that the more RAM a phone has, the better it functions. And I know a lot of people say that eight gigs versus 12 gigs, you can't tell a difference, but as somebody who's obviously a power user, I'm a big multitasking person. I'll have several apps open at one time. I can tell you, I always can tell the difference between an eight gig of RAM phone versus a 12. Having those extra cameras, on the 6 Pro to me makes the 6 Pro a better buy than the 6 and the 7. Um, a lot of people aren't going to want to hear that, but when you factor in the size, you factor in the performance, you factor in the bigger battery, you factor in the bigger, better screen. I know a lot of people are going to say, yeah, but Tensor G1 versus Tensor G2, what do you, what do you mean that it's better, right? I don't think it's better enough to justify skipping out on the 6 Pro. I think if you're looking at a 7 or you're looking at a 6 Pro, go 6 Pro. I just, I, I am a firm believer that that the 12 gigabytes of RAM versus 8 is better than Tensor G2 versus Tensor G1. My phone was very fast. I didn't have battery problems and I even didn't have um, fingerprint reader problems. Mine read really, really fast and it was just a fantastic device. I mean, it was literally, my experience with the 6 Pro was flawless. Um, and to this day, it's one of the best phones I have ever owned, just because it was, it just seemed like a perfect seamless experience. 
Um, everything from, from logging in to using that fingerprint reader. Um, no, it didn't have face unlock, but I really didn't miss it because guys, seriously, I mean, it was like, touch it, open, touch it, open, touch it, open. It was just like, I never had an issue. One of the things I did on my phone, as you can see, is I, I had a matte screen protector that I put on there. Still, even with that screen protector, seemed to work as good, if maybe not even a little bit better than what a lot of people said. Um, I never had any dropped calls. I never had any issue getting service. I never had any Bluetooth connection issues. Um, I never had any like sluggish slowdowns when I was trying to access internet. Um, I live in a pretty strong, heavy, 5G network area, so I get 5G almost all the time. And um, I can tell you taking a long road trip with the Pixel, having the Pixel, uh, an S22, and an iPhone 13 Pro, the Pixel was always the last to lose service if we went into a dead zone and always the first to regain it. Great design minus the glossiness and just a flawless experience with performance. To me, that should be enough to tell you that this phone was fantastic and to this day still is an amazing device. And I would still, late in 2022, say if you can't afford a 7 Pro, go find a 6 Pro. I don't think that there is a better phone for still photography when it comes to a mobile shoot. The Pixel is going to be the most consistent. It's also going to be give you one of the most pleasing images. It's also like the best baseline if you're going to edit photos when it comes to those rear sensors. The front facing camera is very lackluster, but when it comes to those rear lenses, nothing is going to, to beat or be better than the Pixel image overall. That main sensor is just Really, to me, it's unbeatable. I know a lot of people say it would be hard to beat. Not saying that it couldn't be, but it, it's it's hard. And to me, it, it's you can't beat it for what it is. As far as the other lenses, the ultra wide, sure it doesn't get as wide, but also I saw less distorting out of it um, compared to the iPhone and Samsung. Um, their ultra wides get so wide that you have some distorting like at the corners versus the pixel might not be as wide but you definitely didn't get that distorting on the edges. When it comes to zoom, not only is pixel zoom pretty good but their digital zoom is almost as good as Samsung's actual physical sensor zoom. <laughs> it's really hard to beat and of course both of those crush Apple. So cameras are a total win. So here we are, late 2022, if you're looking for probably the best phone deal that's out there, 6 Pro. I know a lot of people are gonna say the 6 because it's so cheap, but I would tell you that for 150, 200 bucks more, for 600 bucks, you're gonna be able to get a Pixel 6 Pro. That's a phone that I think not only, not only is as good as most of the flagships that came out in 2022, it may be even a little better than some of them. Um, just the consistency of it, it aged well, all the bugs have gotten worked out, you get 12 gigabytes of RAM, and then you just have some of the best cameras, both pictures and video that are out there. I don't think the Tensor G2 bump in power and consistency or flow or any, anything that it does, it might be you know 20, 30%, but it's not a huge leap. And so I just think that that, 6 Pro for me was flawless and I would think that here late 2022 if you can find one and you can find it new and you can find a good one on Amazon and I'll link maybe one or two that I find below you got to do it that's going to be it for me thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time